Well, it's very windy and we are nearly at the top of Mam Tor, an impressive Bronze Age hill fort. There are incredible views all around. Let's get to the very top. Hill forts, amazing, aren't they? Almost everywhere in Britain you can find them and beyond, from massive Celtic proto cities to tiny strongholds for a handful of families, they coat the island. At some of them, you'll find dog walkers, teenagers and tourists. At others, you'll have the entire place to yourself for an afternoon or more. Some are famous English heritage sites, even charging an entrance fee. Others look like no one's been there in a thousand years. Those are the best ones. There really is just something special about a massive citadel on a prominent hill. It's the closest I get to a spiritual experience. Just thinking about all those people who lived there over the years. How important it was to them. How far we've come since. And just how easily we might go back. For me, one of my favourites isn't far from where I live. It's got a great history to it as well. In the Iron Age, it was heavily fortified, dominating both the Hope Valley on one side and the adjacent Edale on the other. With ancient hedgerows and gnarled oak trees, there's something about this part of the country that just feels old. It was England's very first national park, after all. And right in the centre of all that is no exception. This is Mam Tor in the Peak District. Otherwise known as the Shivering Mountain. We know that in the Iron Age, Celtic warlords held sway here. The cultural continuum of the Halstatt Le Ten, making it all the way here and beyond in the seven or eight centuries before the Roman invasion. Chariot riding warrior lords battling it out from heavily fortified citadels. The archaeology here is somewhat unusual, suggesting that people maybe only lived up here at certain times of the year. And even before that, before the culture we know as Laten and Halstatt even began to expand out of Central Europe, this place was an important landmark and meeting point, maybe even religious centre. We're here at Mam Tor. Let's get to the top. It's very early when we arrive. We've come on foot. You can do this entirely the Victorian way, on the Great British Train. We'll be walking from station to station, from one valley to another, across a spine in the peaks. We leave Edale, and before we know it, we're in rolling green fields, sheep and sodden clouds are companions. The last time I walked up this way, 
I didn't even realise that it was a hill fort. We get used to things, I suppose. Take them for granted. It's only in the last couple of years, for obvious reasons, that I've really begun appreciating the archaeological gold mine that is the British countryside. The sheer number of these monstrosities all over the country. The very fact that I'd become so blasé about these sites made me want to go and visit as many of them as possible and to spread awareness about these epic monuments right on our doorsteps. Who needs Peru when we've got these? As we continue to walk up the path, my mind wanders to the much earlier travellers who came up this way in antiquity. How long this path has been trodden. Finally, we reach the ridgeway leading over to the Tor. The Great Ridge, it's called, and I can see why. It's often said that these hill forts weren't just built to see in all directions, but also to be seen. And this place is definitely that. It's huge. And you can clearly make out the man-made defences all around the summit. Not the most impressive defences I've seen, but there nonetheless, having stood the test of time. when almost all other evidence of these people's lives has faded away into nothingness. How much of our world will still be here in 3,000 years? In 1636, long after the place fell out of its original use, at the dawn of an unprecedented new age of academic inquiry, antiquarian and philosopher Thomas Hobbes declared Mam Tor one of the seven wonders of the peaks in his book, The Miracles of the Peaks. and it's been incredibly popular ever since. Later still, the archaeologists moved in. Twentieth century radiocarbon dating places occupation of this site from around 1200 BC with the construction of two large burial mounds on the top of the peak, only one of which is clearly discernible today. Later, over a hundred small platforms were etched into the hilltop to allow the construction of a scattering of timber huts, a settlement. People lived here for hundreds and hundreds of years. Close to a thousand. Just think of all those generations. All those lives lived. The same time from the Norman conquest until today. And then, when the Romans arrived, it all came to an end. We know next to nothing about those people who called these valleys home. Not even their myths survive. Yes. Mam Tor is much older than most hill forts. This place has its roots in the Bronze Age. Meaning 
that it may well have been inhabited from as early as the second millennium BC. It's old. One of the oldest I've been to. And despite the crowds, one of the most atmospheric too. Even in early summer, mist and rain pepper the peak. Wind howls and minds race. When this site was built, sea peoples raided the great cities of the Near East. Ancient Egypt's new kingdom still reigned supreme, and the Hittite Empire teetered on the verge of collapse. And Britain? Well, it was a bit of a backwater, but it was our backwater. Inside the massive fortress, ancient bowl barrows are to be found, the long forgotten graves of ancient rulers within. At many hill forts, signs of occupation, or at least some sort of activity, perhaps of a ritual sort, can be dated all the way back to the Neolithic, sometimes even earlier. From holy wells to stone circles and barrows, spiritual places have a persistent tendency to pass on from one culture to the next. Losing their original meaning, but continuing in use. Evidence at sites like Maiden Castle suggests ritual activity to have continued at many hill forts all the way through the Roman era and sometimes even onwards to the early Middle Ages and beyond. Worship continuing at the places of the revered ancestors. At Breedon on the Hill, a church replaced the ancient hill fort and earlier place of worship. At Maiden Castle, a temple. It strikes me as obvious that Mam Tor had religious associations for the ancients. The concept of the mountain itself is a holy one in the West. Always has been. Like the cave in Mesoamerica. It's been a pillar of faith for all of history from the Tower of Jericho to the Pillar Saints of early Christianity. There's just something about being high up, closer to the gods. The high up places have always had an allure for Westerners, and either side of this one are lush valleys. People must have lived in these valleys for as long as they've lived on the island. The Creswell cave art, not too far away, tells us that much. Scattered remnants of enclaves of hunter-gatherers in the last days of the Ice Age. And for those very earliest people heading into these valleys, what dominates your view at all times was the same then as it is now, the holy mountain. It may have been a relatively seamless transition for this place to become a spiritual centre, a site of pilgrimage of sorts. But then, how did it become fortified? It's tempting to think of a Celtic prince seizing this holy place to promote himself as a divine ruler. But the reality is, it's a mystery. Unfortunately, no sort of written record survives from back then. Not even stories. We have nothing. Such 
is history. We're going for a lovely pint of ale and a pub lunch in Castleton. As always, the Peak District, you've been beautiful. Don't forget to like and subscribe, tell me where you'd like to see me visit next, and I'll see you next time. So, any thoughts on Mam Tor? It was windy. Would have been a bad place to live for a person's hair and face. <laughs> <laughs>